Hey everyone, well happy Easter, happy Holy Week. Today we're gonna do something fun, kids. We're gonna do the Easter story through opening of resurrection eggs. I love that the Word of God has everything we need to understand how to live our life. It also tells us the story about how much Jesus Christ loves us. I love Easter. I love Easter eggs. What's your favorite kind of Easter egg? Mine's Cadbury, okay? I love going to church on Easter, even though we're not going to be able to do that. We're going to have church in our homes, and you can watch online. But we can tell the story about Jesus a lot of different ways. And this week, this Holy Week, was very, very important because it's what gives us salvation and we can have a relationship with Jesus. So parents, if you want to read the scripture with your kids, that'll be amazing. We would love for you to do that. I would love for you just to sit back and listen to the story of Easter told through opening of different eggs. These little plastic eggs will actually tell us the story of Jesus. And so let's do, let's look at, let's look at the Holy Week in this perspective, okay? As we open up the different eggs, we can see what Christ went through just for us. One of the greatest things I love about our church is all the young kids we have there and our learning center is so important to us because we want kids to be nurtured in the faith. So let's tell this story with the resurrection eggs. If you have some at home, you may want to open up yours and tell the story at the same time. Let's see what's in this first egg right here. We got a little egg and inside this we have, what is in here? Ooh, a tiny donkey. Look how small that donkey is. This is a symbol of the donkey that Jesus rode into on Palm Sunday, which we just celebrated. It says a lowly donkey was given to Jesus to ride into Jerusalem just before his death and resurrection. This little donkey, he's actually talked about in Matthew 21, 1 through 9. So you can read that donkey came in and there was a big celebration because the Savior was here. Let's see what's in the second egg here, okay? Second egg here. Uh-oh. We got some money. I think we all like some money at times, right? I see those little little money. Well, sometimes people make uh, do bad things if they get too much money. And I don't know what was going through Judas's mind, but Judas, one of the followers of Jesus, he sold out Jesus. He sold Jesus over to the to the bad guys, to the leaders who were trying to hurt him. Judas accepted 30 silver coins for betraying Jesus into the hands of the Jewish leaders. You can read Matthew 26, 14 through 16. It talks about that. He sold out for some money. I, I pray that we never sell out to Jesus. I pray we always stay faithful to him. But part of the Easter story is, is that he did sell out. Well, let's see what's in the, the third egg here. Third egg. Oh, look at this. We have a communion cup. Who's ever taken communion before? Well, you've probably seen your parents take communion if you haven't, okay? And this communion cup is very special because on the last night that Jesus was on earth before he went to the cross, he had a supper. It was the last supper, the Lord's Supper, communion. And this was the Passover cup. At Jesus' last supper with his disciples, before he died on the cross, he used the cup of wine to explain his death. Christians still drink from the cup to remember Christ's blood poured out for our sins. Matthew 26, 17 through 19 explains this a little bit more that Jesus had to be sacrificed to forgive us of our sins. And this cup represents the sacrifice that he would be making. Well, let's see what's in the fourth cup here, okay? You want to go any further? We're getting, we're getting further down the road here. Fourth Easter egg here. We have some praying hands, like tiny hands. You know, little tiny hands. Maybe you have tiny hands. Well, these tiny hands are praying. Praying hands remind us that Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray for his disciples. Mark 14, 32 through 42 talks about this, that his praying hands, the symbolic praying hands, is what Jesus Christ did the very last night. He was praying for his disciples, and I believe he was praying for us too, because we would be his disciples at a later time. So these little praying hands were very important. Let's see what's in the fifth one. Oh, what's in here? Oh, this is a strange one. Oh, we got, can you see that? A little piece of leather. After his trial by Pilate, after he prayed, he had to go before Pilate and the Roman soldiers used leather ropes with rocks and metal woven in to whip Jesus 39 times on his skin. That wasn't very nice. 
They were, they were trying to hurt Jesus. They were trying to say he wasn't the Savior. You can read John 19, 1 through 15. It gives you a little bit more discussion on that, that there were some people, these leaders, that were trying to hurt Jesus. Well, let's move on past that leather whip, and let's get to the, the sixth egg here. Here's the sixth egg. Can you see that? It's like a little crown, little crown. And this crown is made out of thorns. The soldiers who crucified Jesus, that means who killed Jesus, they hurt Jesus and they killed Jesus, they placed a crown on his head so they could mock him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, you're not really the Savior. That's what they, they were teasing him. You can read Matthew 27, 29 through 31 and find out how mean they were because they were teasing some. That's why it's not good to tease. You know what? We need to be nice to people. Christ, even though he was being hurt, he still loved us. That's an amazing God that we serve. Well, let's see what's in the, the seventh egg here. Uh-oh. Look at this right here. We have the cross. How many have seen a cross around our church, around your house? Yeah, me too. The cross is a very special a very special thing in a very special place usually. Three large nails were driven into Jesus' hands and feet and they nailed him to that cross. You can read John 19, 16 through 20 and read all that Jesus went through on that cross. This would be where he would give his life for us so that we could have eternal life. Well, let's see what's in number eight here. Number eight. Oh, this is fun. It's like a little dike. See, like a little die right here? How many play games before when you roll dice and stuff like that? Well, that's kind of what this is right here. The Roman soldiers, while he was hanging on that cross we just talked about, they gambled for his clothes. They were going to see who would get his last possessions because they didn't like him. So, oh, I'm going to get his garment and I'm going to get his cloak and things like that. So they were gambling. And gambling's not too good either, you know, but that's what they were doing. So let's see. Let's see what's on in egg number nine. All right, what do we have here? Oh, look at this. Can you see what that is? Say what that is. That's a spear. Roman soldiers used a spear to pierce Jesus aside when he was on that cross. John 19, 31 through 37 talks about they wanted to make sure that he really ended his life, and so they stuck a spear. And you know what came out of that when they stuck the spear in his side? It says blood and water came out. That means he died of a broken heart. And you know what his broken heart was? He died for us. I believe that with all my heart. He loved you so much. That's why he gave his life. And that's a very important part because he had to give his life so he could come back to life. Let's see what's in number 10 right here. Number 10. Oh, this is a pretty one. Let's see. Number 10. Who wants to see it? Want to see number 10? All right, here we go. Number 10. Look at this. It's like a little piece of linen, a little line, linen wrapping right here. Just a little piece of it. Joe, after Jesus was crucified, after he hung on that cross and he was dead, they needed to bury Jesus. And so they buried him in Joseph of Armaeth's tomb. That was like a grave. Joseph of Armaeth wrapped the body of Jesus in a linen cloth after he died on that cross. Matthew 27, 57 through 61 shares that with us. Well, we're down to two eggs. Should we open the last two eggs? What do you think? Who thinks we should open the last two eggs? Who doesn't? Well, we're going to. I don't know what you said, but let's get to egg number 11. Oh, what's this? This is very interesting. It's a rock. Huh. This represents the stone at the tomb because they put Jesus in that tomb in that grave and this huge stone covered the tomb. And it was found rolled away on Easter Sunday. I don't know, like a power power surge or something like that, okay? But God rolled away that entrance, that rock that was in the entrance of the tomb. Matthew 28, 1 through 3 talks about that. The guards were scared. Everyone was scared because the power of God made that tomb open up. So what do you think? We're on the 12th egg. What do you think is going to be in this 12th egg? Do you think you know? Well, let's see what's in here, the 12th thing. What? There's nothing in this egg. What? Am I gypped? There's nothing in this egg. Oh, wait a minute. You know what this egg represents? The empty tomb. Jesus' tomb was empty because he rose from the dead, and that's what we celebrate on Easter Sunday. Matthew 28, 5 through 8. If we understand what God is telling us here, 
we don't have fear of death because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And that's the great hope we have. When we get to the end of our life, we are going to be with Jesus in heaven. If you know any family members that have passed away, they are, if they are Christians, they are with Jesus right now. I love this. And Matthew 28, 5-8 tells us so much about this. He rose from the dead. Jesus did what no one else could ever do. He gave his life for us, so ultimately he could live for us. And because he came back to life, because there's no one in the grave. I've been to, I've been to the Jesus' tomb a few times, and there's no one in that grave. You know why? Because it says Jesus came back to life, and he's preparing a place for us in heaven today. And that's the great hope we have of Easter. This is what Christianity is all about. I love Easter time. I love the celebration that we can have. So today, you have an amazing celebration. The rest of this week, I don't know what you're going to be doing, but spend time listening and reading these passages together as a family and celebrate all that God is, all who He is, and how we can have a relationship with Him. It's Pastor Ken. I love you guys, and I hope you have an amazing Easter and rest of the week. Bye, everybody. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you that we can have a relationship with you, Jesus. Lord, you say if we put our trust in you, we have eternal life. And that eternal life begins as soon as we pray that prayer, just to trust you. And Lord, I pray for my friends. I pray today they want you to be, uh, you, they want you to be their Savior, Lord. Please let that be the ultimate prayer. So Lord, pray this, let us pray this prayer together. Jesus, I love you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for coming back to life for me. And thank you for giving me eternal life with God the Father. I love you, Jesus. I want to follow you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed a prayer similar to that, you are a Christian. And that's what makes us saved. Not the actual prayer, but your belief in Jesus Christ. All right. Have fun on this Easter weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.